Hi, let's start with uh, another section. Here, GS3 paper we are discussing for the KIA syllabus. Section 1 includes science and technology. Portions uh, start with the basics of science and technology and emerging areas of science and technology. In the first slide, we are discussing something about uh, India and its uh, science and technology development. Indian science and technology mainly we classify into one is before independence 1947 and after independence. Before independence, we know how that India was under the colonial subjugation of Britishers. So India based a lot of difficulties during at that time for industrial development also, service sectors also, education etc. During 1905, when Bengal partition was happened, freedom struggle movement got into the hand of extremist leaders. They took many measures for meeting the weakness of Indian society. During Swadeshi movement, we boycotted the foreign goods. So when we boycotted foreign goods, we had to resort to some technique and a technology so that we produce the basic minimum stuff for the whole country. And this phase of development continued. In 1951, the first democratically elected government formed IAT Kharagpur in West Bengal. There started a dedicated institution for technological study and development in India. By 1960s, uh, by the end of 1960s, by 1968 and all, we constituted, we established a, a dedicated organization, ISRO, for space exploration and related activities. And India shown very clear cut advantage and technological well known in rockets also, missiles also, satellites development also. Our close association with Russia helped us a lot for realizing this dream. India now stands with a credible launching devices, launching vehicle and we even reached up to Mars moon. And uh, one of the things we should be noticed to hear that India is one of the country which met success in its first Mars exploration attempt itself. So it's actually a rare achievement for India to happen. Today we have several projects, research projects, innovation projects, study reports including we have many gravitational waves receivers, study research centers, we have a neutrino projects, we have a polar laboratories for studying things we have uh, satellites for each and everything even our navic satellites also getting prepared for replacing gps so india technologically stand in a different uh, developmental stage rather than during the freedom struggle movement or during the freedom 1947 So let's move to the uh, first slide, second slide. Here we are discussing about some of the projects initiated by DIT for reaching science and technology development requirement of the today's generation. So DIT has started many projects to increase countries' readiness, which include ubiquitous computing, perception engineering, high performance computing, digital preservation, green computing, bioinformatics free and open source software. Let us discuss that in detail. First one is ubiquitous computing. Ubiquitous computing means computer is everywhere anytime. So whatever activities happening around a human being, around our daily activities, we all, are, we all are surrounded by computing. For example, today's generation you must be knowing that when we go for a jog, we wear a smartwatch that measures all aspects of our health including pulse also breathing efficiency also how much distance we run how much we should run for meeting our weight loss regime so these all are keep on being measured when we were in home actually as per the sensors when it detect that a human being and that it may turn on your ac so things will work like that when the water level go down motor works so these all are became automatic automatic in the sense computation is keep on happening so ubiquitous computing means it's kind of a pervasive computing means there is no privacy private space for human being they he is almost all are is becoming lazy because of the computing activities happening around him and he is happy that artificial intelligence is taking over many of the worries of him 
today is even our automotive sectors are going towards complete automatic cars so everything it wants to be become automatic how it will become automatic by continuously performing computation computing so a computer is everywhere anywhere in the aspects of human being so the objective of bringing this ubiquitous computing was our life will become smart everything is smart we need we need smart watches we need smart phone we need smart city smart food smart 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 so everything should be intelligent intelligent in the sense it should reduce the burden of thinking from human being and it is efficient also yes smart and intelligent means it will automatically become efficient also next comes see here in this picture you can see that so all automatic everything is controlled watch also smart watch even with the watch you can control most of the daily activities of your next is perception engineering perception engineering uh, it's a technology developed and motivated by the models of perception and the cognition of the human beings technology developments for analysis and understanding of the human perception and the cognition process and this field is interdisciplinary in nature that means it is requiring a collaboration between engineers scientist psychologist neuro biologist and other medical professionalist that means perception engineering is actually a collaborated effort of many professionals it's an interdisciplinary approach so research in this development of algorithm and architecture based upon the models of human perception is applicable in areas that are leading to specific deliverables so this special deliverables that include perception driven multimedia conferencing system perception robotics artificial sensing research for development of tools techniques and models for human perception and cognition development of technically competent manpower in the areas of perception engineering through conventional and continuous education so these all are including under the concept of perception engineering next one comes high performance computing you must have all heard this word high performance computing that means the computation speed is heightened it's reached teraflops petaflops so that is what is high performance computer so here aggregating computing power in a way that deliver much higher performance so from the 12 to 5 year plan onwards actually we have formed a new mission for concentrating on high performance computer that is known as national supercomputer mission in the next slide in the next session i will be discussing about nsm national supercomputer missions and how much we achieved in that what is our standing in this why the supercomputers are required it is required for scientific research it is required for weather forecasting it is required for missile simulation it is required for understanding and creation of the universe creating life saving pharmaceutical drugs for all we require now india now stands among out of the 500 supercomputers india has 11 in the top 500 list around the world so india stands actually very competent in the case of supercomputer or high performance computer development and some of the objectives or national supercomputing mission i will say one two here it, it wants to make india a world leader in high performance computer and to enhance the national capability in solving grand challenge problems of national and global relevance and reduce redundancies and avoid duplication of efforts of investment It means efficient calculation faster calculation so that the tension or the risk of overburden will be reduced that's why we require high performance computer india when especially it is moving towards a technologically high country so for all these activities we need some kind of high performance computer next comes digital preservation digital preservation it is necessary why digital preservation is we are going to preserve information documents in the digital form so it is necessary to ensure that the information and the details in all forms of human heritage have to be preserved so for that actually we have formed a national digital preservation program this also i will discuss in the next session along with the national supercomputer mission so digital preservation the growth of why it is required the growth of projections of Um, growth sorry the growth projections of production and the capture of digital information 
of big data big data means digital information too much amount of data which are propelled by internet social networking e government enterprise application then migration from analog to digital cloud based application machine to machine mobile communication so these all made us going towards digital preservation because once it is digitally preserved we can conserve it and we can use it for indefinite period of time because there is a possibility of a data corruption there can be physical damage and a disaster continue to endanger digitally encoded information and so so we should adopt for a cloud based technology for better preservation you must have heard about the bhumi project of karnataka government that is about the land digitization program three taluks in karnataka that is hasan uh, haliyad kartegere so these were reached out to complete digital land titling project land titling project so karnataka in the for this land titling projects is adopting a new innovative technique which is called mirror and curtain system what is mirror and curtain system mirror and curtain system means up to above, above a particular limit of land transaction if more than one owners are there so this particular transaction particular ownership name this should be reflected in the profile of all the owners that is that is mirroring and what is this curtain system curtain system is ensuring a effective litigation a law and order system within the country because we know nowadays a person can uh, go to courts even after 50 years for a particular claim on a particular property and from generation to generation we can drag civil cases in the court in order to put an end to this long litigation process there is that mirror and curtain system in the curtain system government fixed a deadline within that any alleged party any claimant should give and claim once this deadline is over you cannot even if your claim is legitimate you cannot have an say in that particular litigation so next one we will be seeing about the green computing green computing about everything is green or computation purpose we are using for green objectives or whatever the objects we are using for the computation that should be green so green computing means two one is what you require for what you are using for computation and what is the output of your computation so both are green so for example if we are minimizing the energy used for our electronic devices efficient devices we are using that yes that is a green initiative and the projects we are doing that is for a green building or a smart city project which reduces the pollution which reduces the energy wastage which reduces Uh, the green wastage or which reduces our global warming or which makes our world more and more greener that is green computing so here green use is there green disposal is there green design is there green manufacture is there means these are the different uh, uh, field or these are the different attributes that is realizing green computing green use means it is minimizing the electricity consumption of computers and their peripheral devices and using them in an eco friendly manner green disposal means repurposing existing equipment or appropriately disposing of or recycling unwanted electronic equipment green design means designing energy efficient computers servers printers projectors and other digital devices green manufacturing means minimizing waste during the manufacturing of computers and other subsystem to reduce environmental impact of these systems okay yeah. so uh, the rest uh, i will discuss in the next session more about the green computing so let's come to bioinformatics time limit is the problem bioinformatics means information collected from bio bio means it can be human it can be plant it can be any animal so why we are collecting this information one is actually for improving the environment around us second one is for prevention of diseases so bioinformatics two factors including that one is genome project you must have heard about the genome project genome project is aimed at correcting the issues disabilities within the human being by correcting the genome drug delivery that means actually drug delivery to the particular designated area for example a cancer tissue a cancer tissue is there in the kidney so if a medicine 
is swallowed a tablet taken by a patient so it will go to each and every part of the human being um, each and every part of the organ system so instead of that a targeted drug delivery system that uh, deliver that particular drug to that part of the kidney where cancer is affected so it is making our health sectors more and more better when livestock plants are con when livestock plants are conserved it is making our life also better now next last one is free and open source software so free and open source software is required in indian aspect why because it increases the freedom of choice of usage software usage it is increases in the operability it is increase growth of local ict industry it increases growth of free softwares usage to developer community it increases growth of knowledge based resources to reduce digital divide within our country the highest problem faced by our country is digitally divide digital divide means digital knowledge digital literacy is different between different categories of community that means the gender gap between male and female digital literacy is different between different caste digital literacy different religion different regional areas so these kind of digital divides needs to be addressed once the things become become affordable it can become affordable only to become open and free reduce total cost of ownership reduce vendor so india there is actually a number of numerous number of languages also there so when we develop our own free and open source software we can develop that is in our own regional local languages so what we have discussed now so we have discussed about uh, different projects started by our diet diet in the sense department of electronics and information technology department of electronics and information technology so mainly seven projects are led by them for what these projects are for making india ready for science and technology development for our growth for making us ready for more more competition because we know that today's business that is required technology technique so digital knowledge everything is required so ubiquitous computing preservation engineering high performance computing digital preservation green computing bio and free and open source this seven aspect will definitely meet the demands of the country and it it will help us to make india digital so the dream of digital india project will be realized thank you